When the iPhone 8 and 10 were revealed, a photography feature known as slow sync flash was mentioned, but with little explanation. Slow sync flash is nothing new, in fact it's been around for years in digital cameras. We'll explain how this works and give you some example shots while also comparing some iPhone 8 slow sync flash photos versus iPhone 7 traditional flash photos. To understand slow sync flash, we first need to understand how a camera works. Every camera has a shutter in between the lens and the sensor. It stays closed like a blindfold or an eyelid, and then opens up to let light in for a photo. By default, most photos are automatically taken with a fast shutter speed, meaning the shutter opens for only a split second before closing. The reason for this is so it captures light for that split second, which freezes motion and leads to a very sharp photo. When you have a low shutter speed, meaning the shutter stays open for a longer period of time, motion will no longer get frozen since it's capturing light for so long. The issue with this is that the photo can get blurry, either from motion in the subject or shake from the user's hands. Although, you can get some pretty cool photo effects if you know what you're doing, like writing the air with sparklers. Now let's add flash into the mix. There are two main flash sync methods, rear curtain and front curtain. Let's say, for example, the shutter speed opens for half a second. Front curtain would initiate the flash as soon as the shutter is open and then keep the shutter open for half a second. Rear curtain would keep the shutter open for half a second and then just flash before the shutter closes. Now let's introduce exposure into the mix. Exposure determines how light or dark an image will appear when it's being captured by your camera. If you aren't using a flash at night, let's say to do a landscape photo with a building that's lit up, the camera can properly expose for the background. But if you also have a subject in the foreground, they'll be underexposed or way too dark. To see the subject, you must turn on flash. The camera then adjusts the exposure much darker so that when the flash goes off, the subject is properly exposed and isn't blown out, meaning way too bright. The issue with this traditional flash technique is that since the whole image became darker to adjust for the subject, now you can't see any details in the background. Now let's take a look at how a slow sync flash photo will work on the iPhone 8, 10, and future iPhones. The camera knows it will flash so it darkens the exposure. The shutter opens but stays open instead of quickly closing. Just before the shutter closes, the flash goes off and freezes the image. Since the shutter is open for a longer period of time, it combined and took in more light from the background, making it brighter but it also took in more light from the subject itself. Because of this, the flash didn't have to be as bright, so the subject is no longer overwhelmed with light. Now combining the brighter background with the less bright subject, the photo looks much better lit overall. The only issue is that since the shutter was open longer, it captures more motion, either from the camera shake or movement within the image, leading to motion blur. Luckily, most motion blur from the subject is easily dealt with by the flash, since the final split second of the flash lit image will cover up any motion blur directly underneath it. The background may look a little blurry, and optical image stabilization does help reduce this, but it's also usually not where the attention is, and it also could lead to some very cool looking images. If you do, on the other hand, want to have a perfectly sharp photo without any blur, you'll first have to choose a background without any motion, then tell your subject to stay completely still, and finally, do your best to keep your hands still as well. To sum it all up, with the new iPhone 8 or iPhone 10, you'll be able to take better photos than ever with the new slow sync flash. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.